Greetings and salutations, Charlton66 here once again with a video and a recap, a little bit longer recap of the Baltimore Comic Con, which um, Howler Mouse and I shot a quick little video, um, let folks know how a good time we were having and it was a pretty good show. Uh, we were there, like I said, I was there Friday and um, we had VIP passes, both Tim and I, so... Um, with the VIP passes, I'll show you what you get with that here in a minute, but with the VIP passes, you get in like a half hour or an hour earlier than everybody else, which, which, which is kind of cool. You can scope out the dealers and jump on your commission list if you need to get commissions done or what have you or get in line. And then um, that was for all three days, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So we were, uh, I was there Friday, Tim got, Tim got in at Friday, Friday night. And we were able to uh, hit the con early on Saturday and early on Sunday. So um, we were kind of kind of loopy uh, Saturday night, you can tell by the video. Um, but it was a good show. Um, I was really focused on getting some of my uh, wish list or want list knocked off for, for this year, um, which were some, you know, some higher value books. Um, and it's hard to find them in, in grade that you want, and the people at, dealers are actually going to have them. So, um, I, the only two artists that I really wanted to see were writers was Mark Evanier and um, um, Jerry Ordway. Jerry Ordway's lines were just too long, and every time I would go by, it was just too much. And I just wanted to sign my bond volumes of um, Power of Shazam, and carrying them around with me all day gets tiring. So. I had to skip on seeing Jerry Ordway, unfortunately. But Tim was lucky enough. I don't want to take still his thunder. He was able to meet him. So that was kind of cool. And I did meet Mark Evanier, and he did sign my volume of uh, Black Hawk, which uh, he wrote in there, Hawka, the best Mark Evanier, which I thought was kind of cool. Yeah, it's, all, it's on my bookshelf now. So that was cool to get that signed. I've been waiting years to meet him. He said it was um, his first... Uh, East Coast convention in like 10 years. So I was pretty pretty fortunate to have him there at Baltimore so um, with the VIP you get the yearbook um, the VIP edition which says right here and it's artist's rendition of Telos um, uh, Mike Raringo Ringo how do you say his last name? I was never clear on it, but it's just different artists take on, and all the artists were there in Baltimore. Um, Steve Conley, which is a phenomenal artist and a really nice guy, um, he was there. Everyone who who um, put stuff in this in his book was there, so you can have you can have it signed um, by the artist. And John Gallagher, right here, is another another great nice guy. But um, uh, this was part of the giveaway on the um, VIP package so that was a um, part of part of the thing oh this is the program program book to Baltimore to the comic-con along with the VIP you get a, the Baltimore comic-con edition of bloodshot salvation bloodshot there enjoying a uh, Orioles game in Camden Yards right outside the con I've never read any of these comics or seen any of the TV shows with the librarians Baltimore Comic Con exclusive and a comic by Colin Bond, Colin Bond called Dark Ark was another Baltimore uh, from Aftershock Press another Baltimore Comic Con um, uh, exclusive and he got that and like I said along with and you got, also got a really cool t-shirt um, uh, along with it in a, one of the big huge bags you got with it but you know for an extra few bucks it was worth paying if you're going to be there for all three days anyway might as well pay the extra few dollars and, and get the giveaways and be able to get into the con for free also picked up um, the art of Ramona Freyden and met her again also I got some artwork from her not at this show but at the show before and it was a nice picture of her in the front piece and I had her sign it Steve I'm more afraid and so it was kind of cool and it's nice it shows a lot of her a lot of her artwork history interviews with her just nice pieces her back in the day 
So it's a nice thing, nice thing to have. Um, she's been she's tr plugging along and to steal Howler Mouse's uh, description or uh, her, she's like our Betty White of comics. You know, she's she's there. She's you know up there in age and she's still with us and she's still cranking out some phenomenal artwork so and it's inexpensive for as what a classic artist she is and what she's given us um you know if you ever get a chance go by her table you know talk to her chat with her and, and you know get some inexpensive artwork it's it's really good and she's very very accommodating to the fans also picked up um comic book people too photographs from the 90s um, this lady, Jackie Estrada, was an insider comic book fandom. She did the first one, which was from the 80s, which is really good. It's my time frame, which was really nice. Um, so a lot of these are candid pictures, candid photographs, backstories of um, things going on. So it's one of those things where um, it's... Uh, excuse me. Sorry about that, how to, how to get the phone. But um, back to this, this is photographs, candid shots, and backstories of, of um, comic book uh, pros um, back from obviously the 1990s, as it says. So it's a pretty good book. Uh, the cover price is for 35 and the guy had it for $8, so it's brand new. So I picked that up. Um, some other stuff I picked up, I wanted to get his. Uh, get his um my one of my favorite villains of dc's vandal savage so i was trying to complete a lot of his appearances I was able to get flash 137 great um great cover there of course golden age flash which is um a plus there and good old vandal savage so nice um nice copy here pick that up and um Another nice one, another great cover. Um, Flash 235, great Vandal Savage, taking everybody out there. He's one of those um, obscure enough villains you don't hear a lot about him, and when you do get a chance to read them, it's it's really they're really fun stories. His first appearance, even though it guides for. Uh, uh, affordable price as far as I'm concerned, but um, dealers, when they have um, that Green Lantern 10, I believe it is, it's, um, they triple guide price on it, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not paying that. Um, a year ago, you'd be able to get it for guide, but not anymore, I'm not, I'm not paying that, so. And, um, of course, I already showed this already yesterday, but I'm showing it again because I love it so much. All-Star Comics 35, first per Degaton, which is another one of my favorite villains. You know, any villain that uses time to um, to do what they do what they do in their dastardly deeds, I'm I'm all in for it. So, good old per Degaton, of course, Vandal Savage. So, um, that is uh, that's one of my favorite my, one of my favorite pickups for the for the whole con right there. Also picked up Captain Midnight number sixty-five. This is an awesome uh, patriotic cover. And one of my um, favorite pickups this week, and I broke it out of the slab like I said I was going to, so I can read it. And I don't like slab comics. Um, if I have to buy them slab, I will. But um, the minute I get it home, they come out. Thing number 14, awesome Steve Ditko work. Um, it's graded a 6.0, so pretty happy to have that in my collection. Good old, old Charlton, 1954. And another one off of my, um, off of my uh, wish list or want list for this year. And I found a high grade copy, and I'm pretty happy to have it. I paid. Paid a little bit more for it, but um, I've, now that I have it home, I'm glad I, that, that I did. So, the Shazam 28, pretty nice, uh, pretty nice copy. Um, you know, first uh, Bronze Age appearance of uh, Black Adam. 
Um, you know, it's hard to find um, people either keeping them or it's hard to find in grade that you'd want to have in your collection. But anyway, this is, I did, was able to acquire this, which I'm very happy about. Another comic scratched off the list for 2017. That, my All-Star 35, the, Sh the Shazam and the Thing, um, 14 made made the show for me. I was, at that I was content. Everything else was icing on the cake. So, um, Tim hooked me up with, uh, with Blackhawks Book 3. And this is always, this is getting my radar for some reason. I don't know why. I love Blackhawk. Um, this escaped my uh, radar. And he also hooked me up with Blackhawk number two. I've had him out of order, sorry about that. Tim hooked me up with that. And the guy I bought the um, the the thing from, um, we are talking about Steve Ditko, we were discussing it, and um, he gave me um, some of the newer stuff that Steve Ditko's doing. He just gave this to me with the purchase of the comic that, that I paid for. Uh, all this has it has some reprints in, in there and some of the earlier stuff that um, some of the earlier stuff that Steve Ditko excuse me reprints some of his earlier stuff and also his his newer stuff is is, is is in this and also in this the hero comics by Robin Snyder helps publish has, has Steve Ditko them they, they together publish this. And he's got a bunch of current stuff still, and this has awesome preliminary pencils in it, which is it looks just really great. I mean, um, Steve Ditko is, I think, in his 90s, and um, and he's still got it. I mean, look at that. And this is all this is all recent stuff before before it's inked. And he does everything himself: inks, letters. So it's pretty darn cool to, to see that, to see that he's still going strong. Um, but again, his um, Ayn Rand philosophy um, does bleed. Now again, this, um, this story might have been earlier. I've not read the full issue yet, but it might have been. No, it says 2017, so... Um, it might be an earlier story. Uh, looking at the, looking at the the, the clothes they're wearing, but um, Steve Ditko might be doing might, might be doing that on purpose. So, but um, that was cool to get. He just gave me both of those issues uh, after I bought that thing from him. Um, the, I I always said um, I haven't bought an Iron Man comic book in probably 20 years, um, a new Iron Man comic book. I take that back. Yeah, it's been about 20 years um, since I bought a new Iron Man comic book. But I, I broke that trend when Steve Conley did an awesome uh, original Iron Man on the cover of the, of the sketch cover. thought that was very, very cool. And um, Steve Conley is a great guy. Um, he's uh, He self-publishes his stuff, and um, he's got a great taste for the characters and, and, and designing his artwork so, so I thought that was kind of cool so I did buy an Iron Man comic book I've not read it I'm not going to read it I just like having this cover with um, with this awesome drawing on the front of it um, also picked up uh, found Mr. Miracle 1 and 2 at the show so I was happy to get those second issue I missed out on the first issue I was happy to get that Um, Tim hooked me up with uh, bug number two. I didn't realize how good this was. I know Mike, Mike Alred's doing it. I should have known better, but um, he showed me this. I'm thumbing through it, and I was taken aback by the DC history that they're pouring in, into this. And uh, the Blue Beagles on the cover, and um, Sandman and Sandy. So I was like, wow, what is going on with this? This is only issue two, so I got to pick up one. But um, Tim let me have, have this one. I do appreciate it, Tim. I also picked up from the Dynamite booth two variant covers for the Shadow. I'm not a big variant guy, but I'm a Shadow guy. So it's one of those things where the different images of the Shadow was better than the one than the newsstand or the one I, I got in my pull list. So 
and I had to have one by Michael Kaluta. So Dynamite Booth had both those covers, so I was able to purchase those. There was a black and white version of this, but it doesn't interest me, so I didn't I didn't pick up that. Not that much in in, in the variance. Uh, there was a guy there, independent publisher, um, uh, named Chris Kemple, and he did this comic book called Red Vengeance, which I love the look of the character, and it's a period piece, it's set back in the 50s, and I'm always a sucker for the pulp type of heroes that uses their skill and, 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 and um, and their abilities to get out of stuff and to um, figure things out without having superpowers. So, um, the Red Vengeance, this is the first issue. I got this from him, which I've not read it yet, but um, it's the first thing on my list I'm going to read other than the, um, the my thing that I picked up. And I got number two as well. And um, I just love the look of, of, of these characters. The Shadow Scarab, I mean, how cool is that? And I was able to pick up the original artwork for issue two. Here's a Red Vengeance image um, that is on the cover there that he photoshopped and made smaller to fit on the cover. And there's the Shadow Scarab, which is right there on the cover. So I was able to pick up both those pieces from him, which I was pretty happy with. Shadow Scarab and the Red Vengeance. Also picked up um, some uh, holes for the fill real quick. I'll go this pretty quick. Defenders 11, Defenders 48. I always put these back in Mylar already. Had to get them out of those those dealer bags. 53, Defenders 55, Defenders 57. Defenders 69. Some of these are needed in the collection, and just one or two are upgrades from what I had. I mean, they were only like two, three bucks a piece, so I couldn't uh, turn it down. And for some reason, I, I, this has always eluded me. I don't know why. I've got the complete run now, but Internals 18, I don't know why. I, this is not with my run. I keep, I keep missing out on it. I don't know why, but I was able to actually find a nice copy. And again, it's, it's nothing to write home about, I understand, but still, it's the internals, and it was only $2, so pretty happy with that. And uh, my beloved Metal Men, I had not missed a couple issues of them, so I was able to find 52. Really nice copy. Look at that black up there. Really nice copy. And Metal Men 53. DC Comics presents uh, number four, the Metal Men, Superman and Metal Men. I have a beat up copy of this, so this would be an upgrade for me. Great Garcia Lopez artwork in that. And Superman and Red Tornado, I'm sure our buddy Shannon has this copy, or numerous copies, I'm sure. Superman and Red Tornado, for his love of Red Tornado, I'm sure he's got a, got a few of these and uh, fill in my invaders holes, uh, invader number eight. Invaders 21. Invaders 24. Invaders 35. And invaders 37. So again, that picks up my comic books per se, um, and I was able to also pick up this nice Hercules, Adventures of the, of the Man God Hercules, number 8, the CGC 9.0, pulled this puppy out, read it last night, awesome Sam Glasman stuff, can't go wrong with that, and of course, Thane of, was it, Bathguard, Bagarth. Yeah, you know, it was graded 9.0, but it's number 8. 
love the magazine size of these Hercules books. Some of these are hard to find. Some of these are hard to find, so I was very happy to have that. And I picked up some fanzines. This graphic showcase, I don't have these in Mylars yet. I don't have any magazine Mylars. I have to order some, but this graphic showcase has awesome early artwork from Kaluta, which this is a Kaluta cover. Awesome artwork from Kaluta's in there. And Bernie Wrightson, um, early 69, this was put out. So, um, graphic showcase, I picked that up. Uh, Rocket Blast Comic Collector, number 87. Awesome Don Newton. Awesome Don Newton. Um, uh, Green Hornet cover. Great stuff. And one thing about these fanzines, man, you can find early artwork from so many people. Things you don't even know exist. Um, and it's just awesome to have them. And it's just like a surprise. It's like a... These are like time machines. You open these things up and read them. They're like time machines, man. And the only thing that's really aggravating, or I say, I was just say aggravating, but wishful thinking is that once you open it up and you see prices from one of the dealers on, on these comics, you're, you're just thinking, wow, you know, it's it's they're so cheap, so inexpensive, even for that time frame, you know. Uh, you know, All Star Comics 35 that I, I had to, you know, pay a pretty penny for. Um, you know, you see it in, in these, in some of these early Rocket Blast or some other earlier fanzines, you see an issue like that for like $6, you know. And, you know, it's, 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 um, it's all putting things in perspective. But what people thought about comic books, they really want to collect them. They're not out to make tons of money off of them. And, and fandom was just a lot different back then, so. Um, Rocket Blast Comic Collector, number um, 151, a Harlan Ellison special. Love Harlan Ellison, and, um, and I'm dying to, 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 to read this. And another great Rocket Blast Comic Collector, awesome Don Newton with the Spy Smasher. Great cover on this Rocket Blast. Love those Golden Age heroes. Excuse me. And this great Stranko cover of the Ray. What a graceful pose. I think it's pretty awesome. Comic Crusader number, number nine. I'd love to meet Stranko one day and get his signature right there. Awesome Stranko signature would be great to have right there. And this great home I should say the all-star comics review has every listing of all-star comics what it's about who's in it what villains appear has a checklist of where they appear in the Justice League comics and all-star squadron all these other stuff anything had to do with the all-star characters the Justice Society it's it's in this book and I'm very happy to have this um, it's a good reference material um, and I got it from the same guy I got these fanzines from so Again, that was that's my haul really from Baltimore. Um, I'm really happy to have this off my one list, and I'm happy to have everything I've got. But um, this thing is just really phenomenal. Um, can't get enough of that. Steve Ditko, man, 1954. Can't beat that. Of course, one more time, everybody. I'll start 35. Per Degaton. And look at that. Just a great cover. All the modern stuff falling into the hourglass and and more antique stuff at the bottom. And Per Degaton's in the middle of it all. Great, great cover. Very happy to have this. So, um, you know, we, we ended out the con fine. Um, uh, I know Tim's going to do his video. Um, the guy's a beast when it comes to those bins, man. He is... He's a trooper. He is, um, he goes through him a mile a minute and finds the obscure stuff. I need, I think I need to hire him to find Charlton books for me, to find the obscure Charlton books. Save me some time and effort and have, but half the fun is a hunt, but, um, he just has a knack of, um, honing in on something, go through it really quickly, find something, and it's, it's got a cool reference to it. Um, he hooked me up with a couple of things. I don't want to steal his thunder, so... 
I went through death appearances and everything else. But um, like I said, it was a fun time. Um, we'll do it again next year, hopefully. Um, we'll see how it comes out. It was great meeting Tom Ryan and and and, and um, Comic Core Four Ten. Um, talking to those guys, it was fun. Um, knowledgeable, knowledgeable individuals, man. Um, the stuff we're talking about, I just it's obscure things that I just think not too many people know about, and it's refreshing to uh, talk to people who have the same tastes and uh, and I can learn something from. So it's really fun. Like a lot of stuff on YouTube and a lot of the channels that I watch, um, I'm always learning things, man. And uh, and it's getting to a point where you know I'm I'm jotting stuff down. Um, you know, I'm pausing the video and writing something down to add to my wish list and my want list and and um, find something new. So um, I do uh, take in what everybody talks about. And um, again, thanks for, uh, for for viewing our video and uh, and um, subscribing to my channel. I do appreciate that and leaving comments. I do read all the comments. It's getting to a point where I may not be able to answer all of them, but um, I do, I read every single comment and I do appreciate um, the comments. I take everything, everything in. Um, Helps me make, make helps me hopefully make better videos, um, and just seeing what um, people have to say and what they think really really motivates me to uh, to um, make the videos and I you know makes me enjoy it even more. So thanks again, guys. I appreciate the comments, the viewing, the subscribing. I do appreciate everything, and um, talk to you guys soon.